Welcome back, everybody. Today, we are going to be taking a look at a rogue deck for the 2004 format that I've been working on, and that is going to be a Waylord EX Skeptile deck. Now, obviously, Waylord is a deck in the 2004 format. It's pretty solidly, I would say, a tier three deck, and it's something that I've wanted to work with, see if maybe I could find a different way to play it, get that win percentage up a little bit, maybe get it into that tier two status, tier one status. And one of the things that I noticed right away with Waylord was that it's got 200 hit points. And back in the day, this was unbelievably huge. Most EXs in the format had somewhere between 100 and 150 hit points. Um, I don't think there is anything even, anything in this, the 2004 format above 150. And very commonly, most non-EXs in the format are going to have somewhere between 70 and 100 that are going to be main attackers. That's going to be like your Gorbis to your Blazikens. Now, I wanted to be able to take advantage of this 200 hit points, and I just wanted to make Waylord as hard as possible to knock out. And this combined really well with the strategy of, obviously, um, having the super deep dive, which heals three damage counters, and it lets you switch Waylord with one of your bench, and then the dwindling wave, which is for 100, minus 10 damage for each damage counter on Waylord. So, the deck has to have some sort of strategy of basically keeping damage off of Waylord. Now, there's a, a lot of different ways you can do this. A very traditional Waylord deck is going to play a lot of fossils. So you're going to use a super deep dive, switch back to a fossil, heal your 30, and then they have to hit the fossil. And then you can either bring Waylord up and attack with it, or do another super deep dive and switch with another fossil. Now, Normally, Waylord will also use a combination of cards like Blossom and Potion to get that damage off. But what I decided to do was to use a Skeptile variant and then take advantage of Pokemon Nurse. In my experience in the 2004 format, people find playing against Pokemon Nurse to be very frustrating. They work very hard to get some damage on something. And then when you just literally completely remove all that damage, um, it's very annoying for them. And this comboed very well with... Um, the Dwindling Wave attack to make sure that we have a fully healed Waylord. Now, I'm going to say that's going to be the general strategy of the deck. Matchup-wise, it's going to match up very well against any sort of deck that has relies on attackers with 100 hit points or less. Um, most Gorbis variants are going to be a good matchups for you. I would say most decks that rely on things less than 100 are going to be favorable, while decks that have a lot of Pokemon that have more than 100 hit points are going to be a lot more challenging. Things like Swapbert, for example, can be very annoying to play against, not only because they have the Crushing Wave to try to remove energy, snipe you on the bench, but they also have very awkward hit points with 110 on the Stage 2 and 150 on the EX. We do play some techs for that, but um, those sort of decks are going to be, I would say, annoying to play against. So, going along with this, I also wanted a secondary attacker because of things like Swamp or DX. So the same tanking strategy that we could use with Waylord and Pokemon Nurse works incredibly well with Skeptile EX. So the overall strategy of the deck is to take advantage of Skeptile from Ruby Sapphire, Pokemon Nurse, and then to tank something and just make it literally unkillable for the opponent. That's either going to be your Skeptile EX or your Waylord EX. And it depends completely on what you're playing against or matchups as which one you kind of prefer. Now, jumping into the actual cards here, I have found that getting a good start with this deck is absolutely crucial. So instead of just playing your standard four Dunsparce, I actually play six openers in the deck, and that's going to be your, your four Dunsparce, one Corsola, and then one Love Disc. Love Disc, in general, I think is very good in the 2004 format and should be making its way into, I would say, different setup decks. But Corsal is another one where it just it gives you massive draws. 70 hit points is very respectable, and that Grass Weakness is not going to come into effect super often. Now, I am going to say that there was a very good Whaler player um, named Timis. He goes by Timis GG on TCG1, and he played in the 2004 tournament. He went 0-1 and then dropped from the event. He won a 2004 tournament in the past with Waylord, and I would say certain things from this list I borrowed from his, essentially that Corsola and that Love Disc, 
I would say most of the rest of this is mine, but the course on the Love Disc, I, I definitely took from him. Now, the three Trico, three Grooveile, two Skeptile, and one Skeptile EX. Now, I, you have to play two of the Ruby Sapphire Trico, and you have to play one of the Skeptile EX. So, and this is just for prizes. Now, I went with a no rare candy variation of the deck for a couple of different reasons. One, to save space on it, and then two, it works a little bit better with Mystery Zone. I do think that you could make an argument in the deck to cut, say, like maybe one Trico, two Groove Isles, and then something in the Super Scoop Up lineup to play, a, say, three rare candy, and then an Oddish and a Blossom. I've just found that without actual draw power like Delcati Magneton, it's very hard to set up multiple stage twos. So I went with, I would say, a little bit more consistent and a little bit thinner line. Now, as I talked about, one Skeptile X. Skeptile X is great for the deck for a couple of different reasons. One, in certain matchups, you can tank it just like you would a Whale Lord. The green heal can also be very useful if you need to remove further damage from Whale Lord EX. Poison Ring and then Slashing Strike are also really solid attacks as well. That 100 damage, once again, is going to knock out a lot of things in the format. Things that Waylord might struggle with, um, two very popular EXs in the format are going to be Swamp Bird and Gardevoir. Both of those are going to be Grass Weak. And then, of course, opposing Skeptile EXs are going to be Grass Weak, surprisingly. Um, if you're playing against a Blaziken EX, then obviously that's going to be Water Weak, and you've got the Waylord for that. Two Waylord. To Whale Lord, I've seen a lot of Whale Lord decks go 3-3. Three, three. In my opinion, if we're basically making it, making it so Whale Lord never dies, we don't actually need to play that third line in there. Um, supporters, we are going to go with your Essential, your 4 Copycat, 4 Stevens. Since we're not playing the Delcaddy Magneton engine, we're going with 4 Underground Expedition. I also consider this pretty much mandatory in a non-Delcaddy Magneton list. And then I went with 2 Oracle. I'm going to say... The Oracle has been testing okay. I think you can make good arguments for Pont, and I think you can make good arguments for TV Reporter in this as well. Um, the idea behind the Oracle is that we use that Strike and Run, and then we can switch to a Corsola or Love Disc, and then we can Oracle, and then draw off of that. Now, I also want to note something very common is when you Dunsparce, you're going to Strike and Run once, um, and then depending on your setup, you're either going to switch then, or you're going to Strike and Run twice, and then switch to a Corsola or Love Disc, this is going to be very similar to a strategy that you can you're going to use with um, like Crobat Gorbis, for example. But you always want to switch that Dunsparce out and not retreat it, because that way, if you have a Grass Energy on it, a Rainbow or a Crystal, you can save that energy for later with the Energy Trans Skeptile. Now, um, I play two Elms Training. I'm going to say this does feel a little bit light. I would like a third one in the deck. Um, one Town Volunteers. This is strictly for my, my comfort level. I've gotten into some awkward spots with the, the energy once uh, a couple of times, and the Town Volunteers kind of bailed me out. It's not going to be super useful for the Pokemon, but I do like it for the Town Volunteers. It can help with the Pokemon if you get an awkward, um, I like some awkward prizing, and you do need to send a Wailord line back or a Trico line. I'm going to say I've thought about playing some sort of energy retrieval. There's different energy retrieval cards in the, the format. Like, I think there's one where it's put a basic from your discard into your hand or shuffle three into your deck. I think that would be solid. Only playing two waters does get a little nerve-wracking, so um, that does help with that. Essentially, you have the energy to power up two attackers, and that'll give you a little, little bit more room with that. Now, um, I only play two class fossils in the deck. This has been okay. I would like a third. When I was playing a very heavy Fossil Waylord version, I think I was playing six or seven, I just didn't find it to be that useful. I do like, I would say, somewhere in the two to four range. I do think that is the correct number. Two Mystery Zones. This is a deck where you just cannot ignore Desert Ruins. You've got to make sure that you, you're able to bump those Desert Ruins and get that chip damage off the board. Essentially, if you're playing a matchup where you know they play Desert Ruins, you have to let them play the first Ruins. And then you can just trade with it twice. Most decks aren't going to play more than two Desert Ruins. Mystery Zone is actually really solid in this format, or for this deck, because you do need to search out basic energy cards. And it's really simple to throw an evolution back in, get that basic energy card. Now, I'm going to say I for the energy or for the Pokemon lineup here, I play four nurse. I'm sorry, not Pokemon lineup, but um we'll call it what main concept of the deck. I play four nurse. 
Obviously, that is for the Skeptile, the Energy Trans. And then I play four Super Scoop Up. This essentially should work the same way as the Nurse. It's a really cool combo if you have Whale Lord active and a Whalmer on the bench. You can move all your energy back, Super Scoop Up the active Whale Lord, and then send up the Whalmer, evolve into Whale Lord, and then you can start hitting again. I am going to say I think I like the Super Scoop Up. But I do think you can make a solid argument in the deck to drop it for, say, um, like two Claw Fossils, maybe one more Supporter in here, and then like an Elm's Training. I think that would be really solid as well. Maybe an Energy in the Energy lineup. I think there's a couple of different things you could do with that. Now, the idea behind it is, is if you send up a Fresh Whale Lord, you should hit for 100. The nurse should give you a fresh whale lord four more times, and then you should always have a, like a secondary attacker you could send up for another 100 damage. So essentially, you should be able to hit for 100 at least six times over the course of the game um, with whale lord without playing the super scoop ups. So you can make some arguments for both. I do like them. It's also a switching card. So those are my thoughts, my arguments for and against it, and maybe what I would replace it with if you wanted to test something else in those spots. Now, for the actual energy lineups, we go with four Rainbow Energy. Obviously, this is for not only the Energy Trans, but for Whale Lord EX as well. Ideally, you want to get those four Rainbows into play and then protect them at all costs. Four Grass Energy with Skeptile. This will fill the Colorless Energy requirements on Whale Lord, plus the um, Grass Energy requirements for Skeptile EX. Two Crystal Energies. I love playing decks and then showcasing cards that don't get to see a ton of play. The cool thing about Crystal Energy is... If it counts, it's a colorless energy, but it counts as the same types as the basic energy I have on a Pokemon. So let's say I have a Whale Lord active with a grass energy, a crystal energy, and a water energy. That crystal is going to count for both grass and water. So I can move the crystal energy around with Skeptile. And then at the same time, too, it'll count as a water. So not only will that provide the grass for the Skeptile, but I can also count it as water. So I'll have two water attached to the Whale Lord. So simply a grass and a rainbow will also give me the necessary energy to attack with dwindling weight. Two honor energy seems a little light, but we've got the four rainbows and then the mystery zones to search out the two, the town volunteers to get it back. Now, I'm going to say I've had a ton of fun playing this deck. It is, I would say it's a ton of fun to play. It's, I think, a very solid way to play Whale Lord, but it's not an unbeatable strategy by any you know, means, um, stretching the imagination. It can be very frustrating for the opponent to play against to basically put all this work in to get like 150 damage on a Whale Lord and then you just remove it all at once. At the same time too, like I said, matchups with Gorbis, it's going to fare very well against. It's a very um, strong matchup for the deck, but it is going to struggle against decks that have above 100 hit points and that are able to deal with it. I would say it's maybe a high tier three deck, maybe somewhere in the mid tier twos. It's could definitely win a tournament if you hit the right matchups with it, but you're not going to go in feeling like you got a 90% win rate against the format. Like I said, it's a very fun deck to play. I really recommend trying it out. It can be very frustrating to play against. It's very satisfying to watch your opponent do so much work to try to knock out a whale lord and then just have it all Pokemon nursed away. And like I, said, I, I just I enjoy playing the deck. So other than that, that's going to go ahead and wrap up the video. If you got any comments or anything, throw them down in the uh, comment section. I'll get to them right away. If you have not um, liked and subscribed to the channel, please do so. It has it helps me out a lot. But I hope to see you in the next video.